Well, I think, yeah, the numbers were, were excellent yesterday, so we're really delighted with the take-up of 4G. And I think, uh, I think it was 73% growth uh, from Q2 to Q3. So what that really proves is that uh, there's a huge demand for 4G. And uh, I think the secret to the take-up of 4G is giving people what they really need, which is uh, making sure that you know, people get the best data experience at any time of the day, anywhere. So coverage is really important. I think customers want to know the technology they're buying into, the operator they're buying into, can provide that coverage everywhere and not just, uh, not just in the main cities. So that's why we pushed really, really hard on the coverage. We're up to 60% population coverage. And they also need a, a wide choice in handsets. So we've worked very hard to make sure that when 4G was launched, it wasn't just on one or two handsets, but on all the handsets, including the mainstream ones, such as the iPhone 5. Um, and you know, so performance, coverage, choice of handsets, and uh, reliability. So I think what people really want with 4G is the knowledge that they can use uh, streaming or video at any time, anywhere, uh, anywhere they may be, even if they're traveling on trains. Uh, and still get a really good quality of experience, which uh, which is, as we all know, due to the high demand on 3G, was a technology that was never really designed to do that, although it is doing very well, but in the future, only 4G can deliver the amount of volume of data that, that the customers want. In terms of adoption, there was an, there's a conception that you need to give a huge amount of data. So I think uh, on a smartphone, there's a certain, since our consumer launch was really based on smartphones, um, there's only a limited amount of data you can consume on a smartphone. So we worked very hard with our business teams to define packages that are suitable for all customers, depending on their needs. I think at the in initial beginning of our launch, there was a conception that as the speeds were faster, the packages needed to be much bigger. Um, so I think you know we worked a lot with our business teams to, to make sure that people understand what they really need and provide those customers what they really need. So I think there's been a bit of a blocker there. Um, you know, we've, uh, we believe that the 4G service offers a premium to the customer uh, compared to the current service. And so, you know, we've, uh, we've tried to make it accessible in terms of pricing. And as you've seen recently, over the last six months or so, we've been uh, slightly increasing the packages and reviewing the pricing plans to make it even more accessible. And especially the shared plans have been, uh, have been hugely popular. As people understand, they can actually share that data bundle across the family, which is proving to be a real game changer for the, the consumers. That's a really good question, and I think you know, being a pioneer on any any technology, and especially on 4G, is a challenge. Uh, we spent a lot of time trying to communicate to the general public what 4G is and what it gives them. But I think the best argument, really, to anybody is to put it in their hands and ask them to use it. And even today, every single day, even people who are who are very heavily involved in the telecoms industry, when I give them my 4G phone and I say try it anywhere, they are still genuinely amazed at what they get. And uh, that's you know the basic basic the basic reality is you, you you believe it when you see it. So we're working very hard. The best <coughs> argument is to get it get it demoed, get it into people's hands, get people to try it out. And we work very hard with our communication teams to to explain what it is. But to be honest, I think the launch of our competitors, uh, Vodafone and O2, recently has actually helped us a lot because now we got an even bigger communication because they're also communicating the advantages of 4G, which we all agree are there. So, you know, it's an interesting thing that in the last quarter, after they launched, that's the biggest take up we've seen. So we've gone up, you know, by 73% growth in that quarter alone. So I think, I think the message, you know, as a pioneer, it was very difficult to get people to understand what 4G is, but now it's becoming more and more understood as it gets into more people's hands and as more people talk about it, including our competitors. So I think we're through the most difficult part, but we certainly need to do, to do more to keep communicating the benefits of 4G. Yeah, we, we always can learn and we always are learning and uh, we, we keep a close eye on, on other operators around the world. If you look at where we started off a year ago, everybody was pretty, pretty clear on the fact that in the UK we were four years behind the US and you know, four years behind Japan and, and, and Korea in particular. If you look at where we are now, we're on a par. And uh, yesterday in the live network in London, we reached 274 megabits per second in the live network which shows that now we can actually go ahead you know, and be, be first. But there's still a lot to learn, so we watch very carefully. There's a man standing behind you from Sprint. We watch very closely Sprint and AT&T and Verizon, uh, because those, they are the real game changers in the US. Um, in Korea, we're very, uh, we're very keenly watching KT, SK Telecom, LG Telecom. Um, in Japan, NTT Docomo, SoftBank. Those are the, the big players that we watch, because they have the same mentality as we do. 
which is to keep pushing ahead, you know, trying being, being a step ahead. It's a global game, and we can always learn. Yesterday, I learned a lot from the NTT Docomo presentation, looking at what they're looking at for the future, for the 2020 timeframe. And I was actually really pleased to understand that some of those things we're actually looking at ourselves. Uh, and they actually mentioned that in the UK, uh, they are very keen on certain aspects of that. For example, device to device, to device to, uh, communications for disaster recovery is something that we're really interested in. So yeah, you can learn a lot. We're learning every day. We're listening, watching. The key thing, you know, when you're ahead, we're number one in the UK now. And I think the biggest mistake we could ever make would be to become too arrogant. So we work very hard to, you know, to be positive, to be confident, but always learn from, from our competitors and collab. There are many areas where we can collaborate, as we do with three, for example, where we share the network, the, uh, the infrastructure. Uh, but we're also competing, so we're often, you know, trying to trying to find out, you know, what would our competitor strategy in the UK be, and trying to stay a, a step ahead, you know, in a fair way. It's my first time here, so I mean, I've been going to the uh, GSM World Congress in Barcelona and in Cannes before that, every year since it began. But it's a very mobile-oriented uh, congress here. What I found quite unique was uh, a huge variety of operators and, and vendors here because it's such a mix of the fixed domain and the mobile domain. And that was really interesting for me to see there's still quite a lot, a lot of different mentalities around. So you can learn a lot from that actually. And I think today when the fixed and mobile worlds, worlds are converging like never before, it's even more interesting because actually one of the things I said yesterday was we feel like we're building a fixed network in the UK with wireless on the end because we're putting in so much fiber and transmission is so key to everything we do. Uh, which is very similar to what's happening in the, in the fixed domain where they're actually putting fiber to the cabinet and then trying to find other, other ways of reaching the, the last mile. So uh, that's I think the, the most interesting point here is a huge variety of topics and the quality of topics as well because there was some quite detailed technical topics but also very interesting high level views from Liberty Glo Global and our own Deputy CEO Vivek just now. So, yeah, very interesting overall.